Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Neil Arts, and this is episode 20 of our Let's Play. Here we have our Anchor 2, our newly industrialized planet, and I want to show you some things in this episode. Uh, first, <clears throat> basically the objective of this episode is going to be uh, looking at some of the scale that we've been putting in and then unlocking some new things with the solar photon splitting thing. I don't know, that was a really shitty explanation. Sorry about that. Let's see if I can get it better. What I want to show first is some of the stuff that I've been doing off camera. Oh, wow, they're not working. Uh, that might be really something. Okay, so let's uh, start looking at the scale because in a let's play such as this, I'm not going to show everything. I mean, I've you can see the... the the game time is 100 hours, but I have uh, I've probably put out like 15, 20 hours on YouTube. So there's a lot that goes unmentioned. So what I've have done <coughs> in the sessions and also on the live stream is uh, set up some of these beautiful smelting arrays. Now this is probably going to be my standard smelting array for at least until I find something better. Uh, the idea is we have 330 along the long one line here. And that means it takes one, two, three, four, five, six lanes in. Okay, so it can take up to <laughs> up to six lanes in and six lanes out. That is a lot. That's 180 copper over here. I have 180 yes. uh, iron here. Yep. So why do we do why do we do that on this planet? Well, the planet here has uh, quite a lot of resources, iron and copper. So it makes sense to actually build it here. And I really felt that I needed some more. Specifically for this one, I built it. Let's see if I can find where it is. And I kind of regret building it there. Yeah. If I go all the way over to the other end of the planet. Let's see if I can find it. My, my cool flying skills. Ow. This one. And I kind of regret building it so close to the pole. I don't think I should build it here. I think I should sort of move it a bit away. But that's, a, that's just another thing. Uh, this is a small build, but these are working like incredibly fast. So this is actually, because it's speed 1.5, then I just need 10 of these. That means that's like 15 crafting speed and plus another 10 on the 15 crafting speed. So this is 30 crafting speed. That means I'm actually getting 60 per second of circuit boards. So just provide them to the network so you can request them wherever you want. And that's something I've set up. And the reason why we've, I've set up those kind of things is because there's a big, big thing that is always, always, always not working, uh, always uh, lacking in the, in these setups. And let me just uh, show you that. Uh, it is that as you get closer into a game, you, you're going through several scales of scaling up the same item and go like, oh, so this is used a lot. Oh, so it's used a lot more. Uh, this one, haha, <laughs> processors. Processors are absolutely horrendous. Well, they're actually pretty cool, but you can see here how big of a build I have done. Basically, each three of those is one per second. And then, of course, the whole thing is multiplied by 1.5 because of the crafting speed. So it's one, two, three, four, five. That's seven and a half. So this is 15. That's 30. So this is 30 processors per second. It's pretty good, but it's also taking up a massive amount of space. And of course, if I need this, then I need lots of circuits, lots of copper, and lots of silicon so this is you can see this is definitely not enough coming in here so all of this is basically just a tribute to the copy mod that it was not possible to do that well it was but i would go insane and my wrist would explode uh, without the copy mod but with copy mod it was actually quite simple to i think i built all of these four things that the silicon smelter the copper smelter the iron smelter and this one in about one and a half hours so i think that's a pretty good sort of time investment for for this but our main issue we are simply not getting enough high purity silicon and that's where we have to that's the first problem we have to address because it's i mean without silicon there is no party here and you can see here it only sort of the solders only flash about halfway down so we're just getting like minuscule amounts coming in here and I want one, two, three, four, five, six lanes full. Yeah, that's not really happening. And we simply cannot keep up because this one is feeding not just here, but also on the remote planet, the other planet. So I am just going to, hmm, yeah, we're actually going to have to charge a bit here because I used all my, all my charge running around, flying around and also warping to here because I wanted to have a nice warp, warp in start. So let's uh, place these down in some kind of pattern that is more or less the most efficient, but a bit lazy, so 
Yeah, I can't get all of them to hit me. There you go. That That's gonna be fine. We don't need very much because we're not gonna make a very long jump, so I'll just clean it up again. Just a short jump to another planet in the... Ah, oh, I should have done it and do it the other way around. Oh, look at all of these. So if I look at this system here, there is a lot of silicon here, but where is it hiding? It is actually hiding at Anchor 3. 20 million silicon and also some fractal silicon. So that's pretty good. Let's go to Anchor 3. Anchor 4 is a gas giant, so that's uh, actually nice as well to, to know that. And here we spent the time looking for Anchor 3. Come on. It's got to be here somewhere. Anchor 4. Hmm. There, Anchor 3. Onwards. Beyond the Dyson Sphere. I've not forgotten you, Dyson Sphere. Just, that's not the topic right now. Alright, I'll see you when we get to this new and desolate planet. And we are here. Landing on this planet, you can already see how much silicon is on this planet. It's very nice. Let's find the North Pole. And I don't know, for some reason, I think this is the North Pole. But. Oh. Oh. How about that? How about that? So we are landing here. This is a. What is this planet? If you look at it, it is has fractal silicon. It has good energy ratio. And it has bad wind energy. But you can hear the wind. Uh, this one, so, uh, what else is there? Nothing really interesting about this one. It has lots of copper if, when we need it, but primarily silicon. Stone is also good, but not very much iron. So we are going to set up. Let's get our, just our, our sense of uh, our bearings here. There we go. Let's get something in the middle. Maybe one of these big ones, just for the hell of it. And that will give us just the usual. What we're going to do now is we are simply going to set this up as we've done before. And I know that you don't want to see me set up yet this one yet again. So I am just going to skip until we have set all of it up so that we can actually start looking at what's going on on this planet. Right. So let's uh, jump forward until we have all of these available because I'm going to be setting up some industry here. So I want it to be fully operational and request everything here. It's just better than just to bake the absolute minimum. And I think this is a pretty good place to start uh, phasing back again again. We can see here we have set up the ray receivers. I want to just uh, give it a shot with the ray receivers instead. Considering we have the Dyson Sphere in this system here. And yeah, so... Uh, well, we don't have any sun. So that's why they're not really generating as much as possible. There is actually, they are actually seeing something. Well, that's because this way. There you go. I found it. Just look at the shadows. That's how it works. So they are receiving some and, well, you know, if you look at the power on this this place here, we are using, or we're producing 130 and consume 360 mainly, or not mainly, but exclusively, that's the charging here. So once all these are charged, this will be plenty. But right now, it's not so great. We have everything we want here. They are coming in with concrete because we want it. And all the things that we need to set up a beautiful little planet here. Here, I've just marked these as not relevant. And we have everything we want. So what I need to do now is just go out onto the planet and find all of the locations that we have. Silicon veins, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six silicon veins. Maybe more. Seven, eight, maybe. It's, uh, well... Yeah, they're around 2,000 something each. They're actually all of them pretty much the same. So with this two or two million and something, then I guess there are eight of those, right? That makes sense. Yep, so all of these need to be hooked up so that they can be provided back to the base. And uh, again, that's not something I really want to uh, want to let you endure because that's, uh, again, something was just we just tap these. So let's uh, let's do that again and focus on the building part once we have all that here. We're not going to build a silicon smelting array here because we have that already on the other planet. And that's just fine. That's a fine place to have it. But we might use this fractal silicon for something. And I think that's the what we want to do. Uh, in order for us to... Oh, I'm not going to fly away because uh, we want to set this up. But I know that we need fractal silicon. But let's uh, set this up and then we'll look at what else we, uh, we need. And so we're back again on uh, the same planet and uh, 
Boy, has that changed. And yeah, I kind of regret this because it looks absolutely horrendous with these spikes out here. Uh, I was just uh, felt that this was the fewest amount of clicks to spread power on the world. And I, oh, if someone says, oh, you should use wind turbines, you, you're out of here. I don't like wind turbines. I think it's a super inefficient way to spread power on the planet. It takes all the space and it doesn't really generate any power. We have all the power we need coming from that bleak blob in the sky here. So uh, the fusion reactor in the sky is just fine. But as we can see, we are focusing here. All of these locations have now been set up as small clusters around the world. All eight of them have been tapped and they are now providing into the central network. Each and every one of them is not doing anything. Uh, why are you not doing anything? Ha, someone's been stacking. Good thing we just clicked on that one. Please let the other ones work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, the other ones work. Whew. Okay, so one of them was uh, was not working. Hey, good. Uh, or let's let's say at least one of them was working because um, yeah, maybe more. Uh, so the way I'm doing here, I'm not putting warpers in, but I am putting logistics vessels in because the logistics vessels means that they can now transport around this this area, and that means you can see <clears throat> there's someone back here at Anchor Three that really wants a lot of our silicon, so. They're just being ferried in because I am consuming it at six le six lanes per second. So that's uh, 180 per second. So that's going to be a lot of ships coming back and forth. That should be good. Well, the, the next thing, you can also see that we have uh, settled on power-wise. Even if we have a lot of these, they take an awful lot of idle consumption. Like a crazy amount of idle consumption. If we look at the generation, the generation comes, the light blue comes from exclusively from these. They're not great, but they, I mean, 12 and a half each, that's okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm such a big fan of the exchanges. They are so good. It's just it's such a nice way. And also these belts, they are just making sure that there's warpers everywhere. And that's basically our standard setup now for our polar outpost. Now let's look at this little thing here. It looks so cool. Look at that, fractal silicon. Mm -hmm. So fractal silicon is a rare resource and it's used to sort of make crystal silicon easier uh, the thing is like crystal silicon is not super great and you can also see that this one is taking four seconds to go here and if i go the other way then it's actually going here it takes one purified silicon to go into a crystal silicon and and hold on there one silicon comes from two so basically what the fractal silicon does is it it's one fractal silicon instead of two silicon ore in order to make uh, these crystal silicon. So it's, it's not the best resource. And on top of that, this is only used for particle broadband and accumulators. Now the thing is, and I think I want to show you that before we jump back. So this is kind of being a bit silly, but uh, since I can do the cuts, I'm going to do that. I want to just take a quick jump home just to explain to you what the situation is and why I'm so keen on this fractal silicon actually. So let's do that and I'll show you when we're back home. There we are, we are home. And what I want to show is, oh. All right, I want the one that says broadband. That's titanium glass. Oh yeah, it's purple. Of course it is, that's why. There, purple because it belongs to purple science. All right, so here we have the broadband. I may have overbuilt it here, and we can see this is my missing the uh, missing the fractal silicon. The fractal silicon is made at Lava One, the the home planet here, the Lava Planet. But that one has actually run out of. So if we look at it, this one here has run out of silicon. There's no more silicon on this planet, and that's that's pretty bad actually. <laughs> so we um we can't really make more of that, and. We could import ore from the other, the anchor system to the lava planet here in Kappa Sagittari and then make it into fractal, into making into crystalline silicon and then get in here. So this has, the reason why this has suddenly just disappeared is actually because I am, I have switched to using these assembly machines Mark III. Assembly machines Mark III take eight of the broadband plus two quantum uh, processes and I'm using like hundreds of these everywhere. So uh, with the stuff that you I, I just showed you with this uh, ex Accumulators 
What was it? No, no, there was processors. So I'm using a lot of this, and that means this uh, demand has increased, but our production has decreased. So this was just what I wanted to show you. That it's also affecting our purple science, but since science is not running, we don't have anything until to research until we get to the purple, uh, onto the white science, which is a bit, a bit of a way off. But we are going to make it take one big step towards it today, and that's actually uh, one of the next things. Uh, now we get to the usual thing of me find. Find it. Yeah, there we go. We get slightly better at it. All right, I am going to. Oh, I hope I can jump all the way. I'm going to jump all the way back to anchor, and then we're going to set up this fractal silicon to uh, to solve the issue we have back here. So here we are back at the planet. I decided I wanted to do a cut, and then I realized that you know what? The first thing I would do anyway would be coming back and say, oh, and now I need to set up the mines. So I instead I am just setting up the last mine together with you, so that we can get all of the fractal silicon back into our glorious network and see that it's working it's coming in here and it's set it up oops uh, to the fractal silicon there get the stuff we have in our inventory and that will be both local and global provided or local and interstellar collide provided i'll get a few of these in so that they can transport it also get some of these in i'm not going to be putting in the space warpers here because i don't expect this to be going anywhere except around this planet so that means we've now hooked up all of these locations with the with this and i need to find a good spot such as this one we have uh, prepared hey hello sunshine we're gonna set this up here and this will be the location where we built our uh, our fractal silicon so let's uh, silly silly silicon there we go we are going to build here. This is now not in a smelter, but actually in a an assembler. And this will take four seconds. So if I had 120 at speed one, because it's crafting speed for four seconds, it would be taking one full belt in, one full belt out. So I need 20 on each row because they are speed 1.5. Yes. So that's what we want to do. And that means we need... I'm going to get a middle belt here that'll be, go return and then i'm going to get a you get this one here here on these will be the out uh, the return products let's try to be consistent on these number names oh we are going to set this up we're just going to request some fractal silicon and we are going to provide some of this and it'll be provided uh, globally yes i think so and that also means I will be requiring to get this one. This one will be not supply, but local demand. Yes. Does it get? We get it. Yes. Means from here. And you get the fractal silicon on this side. You get the fractal silicon on this side. Just thinking if this is correct. I think it is. It just seems a bit weird recipe, doesn't it? Then I'd have to get two on the outside. You know, it's probably better to just do a simpler build. Yeah, these two should go one further out on either side, like that. And then it'll be on the outside and going in. And I will then go the usual. I'll take this inbound, this outbound, inbound, outbound. Yay, you love it when I say that, right? There. And this is when I realized that I forgot to load the the mod here for this, uh, this recording. So we are definitely going to have to do that. I'm just going to set these up. So after that, we'll be loading the mod so we can get get these uh, done fast and we'll just time lapse that and then we can see that it'll help with the fractal silicon in the entire network so this has just been been focused on the silicon for the processors because that's needed for quantum chips and for basically anything we need and also here the fractal silicon will also just help with it with another oops that was <laughs> not working uh, with another of these milestones that we are not really really getting and then from there on we feel more comfortable that we've solved some of the bottlenecks there will always be moving bottlenecks that's just how it is but from there on we can now go we can then go into actually trying to 
get some critical photons out of the out of our Dyson sphere. All right, let me uh, load the mod and then uh, we can do this together. That's it. We've now built all of these. That is 80 of these working as if there were 120 and they're working on a four second cycle. So that's 30 outbound, 30 outbound. Let's request some things here. We're not going to do remote supply. And uh, we're not actually, well, these ones are going to be, yep, they're going to be here. This one will be local demand. And this one will just be as it is. All right, we're going to see everything coming in here. And you should see quite a bit actually because we have a number of these locations set up. Should get all 10,000 immediately. They are coming. This is excellent and it'll easily be able to keep up from the locations. How much fractal silicon do we have on this one? We have 600,000. So it's not like an infinite amount. Actually, 600,000 is not an infinite amount. But it's going to be uh, pretty good. That gives us at least 600,000 plus uh, whatever productivity we have. I guess that's probably going to end up giving us 800,000 of these. And uh, that will be setting this one up. Let's uh, while we wait for this one to get all the way up. I am hoping that as soon as it crosses 1,000, we'll see that it uh, decreases, which indicates to me that there is a continual demand for this. And then from here, the next uh, thing is we are going to look at these things. The here we're just going to hold on, on on this one, right? We're going to see. We're going to see. There we go. Immediately it goes out. This one has an extra feature. It can either do power generation, in which case it takes five, or we can do photon generation, where you can see it takes five times as much power from the network and makes annoying sounds. Awesome. But what it does is it then creates, it also increases as this uh, continuous thing increases and it produces photons. It's cr critical photons even. Those critical photons are stuff we can use. Uh, let's uh, look at the tech-wise for this while uh, we're just marveling at this awesome thing. Well, we can't because I'm opening the screen. Never mind. Uh, out here, we have some new research that we want to do the Dirac inversion mechanism. What this does is it allows... Uh, no, it doesn't. It's actually this one. Allow radio receivers to consume graviton lens to increase. That's the one we already have. And what it also allows is that they have this other option. I think that comes from here. Um, number of graviton. Hmm. The Ravis improve the radio receivers sharing this energy of stars as antimatter. Yes. So basically the idea is that instead of making power from the, s the sun, you actually use it for collecting some critical photons. The critical photons can then be split into antimatter and hydrogen. And that's what we have here. And those can, that's the process The It's actually funny that it goes, from, oh, is that because it's a Chinese game that it goes from right to left? Because this just makes no sense that a production thing would, would go from, it would always go from left to right. Anyway, maybe that's uh, that's the thing. I didn't even thought of that. But the essence of it, and we're not going to be making all of it uh, here. We're simply going to set up some big uh, big thing for for this, so we can start collecting it, and then we'll have it in the next episode or something. We can we can figure out how to make it. The idea is that you can then do a controlled annihilation reaction where we can make some annihilation constraint spheres. See, I don't want to do this one until I have a better supply of the pink cubes the particle containers we are actually running out of those and so i need to up that and here we have then some pretty damn good antimatter fuel rods you can see that's 7.5 gigajoules plus 500 fuel chamber that is what we want to fuel ourselves it also can be used to fuel an artificial sun which is and wake up wake up and it can be fueling an artificial sun which gives 75 megawatts so this basically is a good tech for 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 just taking the power of the of the Dyson sphere and converting it into fuel and then shipping the fuel to some other remote location and then building one or two artificial stars and then you are basically good to go for for many uh, for, for all the power needs somewhere I feel this a bit boring 
uh, it, it also, like, this one is not super expensive. It takes a titanium alloy. It's not so bad. And then it takes one of these uh, spheres. That's a particle container and a processor. That's not so bad. But it's something that is continuously consumed, although very, very slowly. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we make this. So where would we want to do that? Well, we're definitely going to be closer to the sun. That seems like the most obvious thing. The question is, though, if we look at our array here, oh, just so damn beautiful, this game. We could make it at our anchor two, but anchor two is, well, for lack of a better word, it's getting kind of crowded. So there's also the option of landing on anchor one and not really going. It's Kimberlite is though. Kimberlite is diamonds. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but 151 solar energy. I wonder if that's a good thing. Well, of course it's a good thing. Hmm. Because I have the idea that what if we take what this planet and not really use it for resources, but just basically like, the top half of it just be collecting photons and the bottom half of it just shooting, shooting more lasers, moving the lasers here into this location and then just having a gun platform basically that would be a kind of sexy idea and that's something we're going to do just now but you know i'll uh, i'll set up a little outpost on anchor one when we are at anchor one when you can start making some some things yep so we are going to anchor one let's jump there and then we can uh, set up our outpost there well 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 now, we, we, I can't even find the sun. Uh, probably the shadow side. It's probably on the other side of the planet then. So it's going to be close anchor one. Also, just in, in order to, for us to... Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's just solid streams of lasers going in. That is so cool. All right. Sh sh shut up. Just go. Go, go, go. All right. Uh, we are, we're going to this location and setting up a small outpost at the top of the world for this. And where are you? That was pretty quick. Oh, this is, of course, it's a lava planet. It's kind of close to the sun, and it's a pretty strong sun. I didn't even think of that. And uh, we are going to, first of all, get the grid. And either this is the North Pole or the South Pole. It's the North Pole. Oh, South Pole. We always want the North Pole, just to, for consistency's sake, unless it's like a tidal lock planet or something like that. We have... Um, I know a lot of people have been asking me, why do I have so much soil pile? Well, that's because I've been paving a lot of planets. This one is a prime candidate for paving because I don't want to deal with all this uh, lava. So we are going to start by putting in stake our claim at this location. We do that. Yeah, and we're going to do smarter than last time because I don't want to use these big ones. They didn't really... They, they take up too much space and they don't look good for orbits. So I'd rather have the, the other thing. So let's... um. Let's colonize, colonize this planet. And look at this. It's so cl Oh my god, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so we have now established our little outpost here. Our polar outpost as uh, it's going to be known. And I really like this. There's just nothing about this I don't like. And okay, so what we want to do on this planet. And well, well, well. Uh, first things first. Let's just have a look around and let's see what's there. There's a bit of coal. There's very little coal. The interesting part is the kimberlite, but we are not here for the ore. We're simply here to make, to turn this into something awesome. Now, I think that since the orbital inclination is pretty much nothing, and the fact that it's so close to the Dyson Sphere means that I think it should be able to hit, like, from everywhere. So I think we want to, what we really want to do is actually set up, start setting up some, some builds like this. And I don't think I want to have them like more closer than I, well, I don't want to have them closer than I need to, right? If I build it here, then it's going to be on a different grid. If I build it like one in, I think it's going to be better because then I can take here and here. And I can drag a line in between, of course, not coming out of that one. I am going to do photon generation for each of these. And I am going to bring in some graviton beams uh, the oh, graviton lenses. Where will we get those? Hmm. Maybe in that's number five. So this is number eight. That one. This is a good place to bring in more stuff that's actually not a building material, but something we'd like to have anyway. So let's get 
I don't know. I don't know how much, how fast they're going to be requesting. Actually, I could do local supply, but I'll certainly do. Oh, it's, no, no, no. It's actually correct. Uh, local demand. Yes, two thousand instantly. And again, I'm just keep taking the concrete because I have a little suspicion that we're going to have to concrete a lot of this. So this will be where we get things out, and I will just start by. Uh, some people might not like this, but yeah, it's uh, we need to make sure that we have something to build on, and I can't build on on lava. So it's going to be a lava planet wherever it is, but the rest of it is not going to be a lava planet. It's going to be a beautiful concrete planet. There we go. And as I was saying, I wanted that one. So what is what did I decide? I decided that I had it this iteration and oh no, that's too close. I wanted it there and then as close as they can be, which is one in. If I start, so just a FYI, if I put it here and then I want to put it on this one, then you can see that it doesn't fit. These are not along aligned anymore, and that means if I put a little built in here then that's gonna work fine but that's not gonna work because it's at a slight angle so what I need to do is make sure that it is not on the line because the line belongs to the next here but actually inside the line we're gonna build a lot of these I'm gonna set up a few of these we're gonna set up this part and then uh, I'll request this might actually just take all the power from our our Dyson sphere this is crazy this is this is basically how, why you have, why you're using the Dyson Sphere. Uh, it's not for the power generation. The power generation from these are just, I don't know, minuscule. I, I tempted to say, compared to the power that this this is consuming. There, let's take this part and just at least do one quarter here, and let's do some numbers as well once we get this up and running. I'm not gonna take that one because then it's, what this one is just multiplied by four. I am going to make sure that I get that one might be a bit weird there here this let me just check if this is the one yep it is okay they're already coming in so I'm gonna get from out here get that get that here but unfortunately this is not actually enough So what I'm doing now is now I'm putting lenses in here. Let's take a look at the difference between this. This takes 5.6 and <clears throat> excuse me, but you're not really doing what I told you to do. I told you to do photon generation. Well, actually, maybe I didn't. It would be nice if I could actually figure out which one it is. If I could look at them and say, ah, you are the other one. I could also have some of them doing power. Right, so they should now be generating photons. Let's look at the difference between having a lens and not having a lens. This one is creating 2.36 per second and using 29, let's call it 20, uh, 30. This one's also the same, 30 megawatts, and this is just double. And it uses one lens every four minutes. So how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 20, and they consume one every four minutes so that's gonna be five every four minutes that means this one is consuming one every 12 seconds it's not overwhelming is it it might be but also just starting to consume more but we have 10 gigawatts in our in our output but we are now producing these critical photons and I think that the idea would be I'm bringing it all around and then from here okay that was just not what I wanted doesn't matter Get these back in here. That one, that one, and in here. So that should mean... Okay. Oh, we do not have enough. This is number eight. And that's the one... No. Uh, eight, that also means... This. That one. I'm just trying to learn which one is going to be uh, 
which one is going to be there. So, I'm just trying here. Uh, this one will go out and go along the edge like so. And this will output photons. This will output photons. <clears throat> okay, so every other one is going to be slightly weird. It's because I'm sort of encroaching on that one. Okay. And this one will have to go all the way around the world. And they're not producing so much that it's going to fill up the belt. I think. And what about the inside? The inside is kind of worse because I have this intersection here. There's just something about this one that I'm not happy about. Uh, let's see. I can take... This one goes out and then makes here. Yes. I'm going to do this. This is just going to be pass through because I don't want to race belts. You are going to pass through critical photons. That one. And that means you get moved for the I don't know how many time. It doesn't matter. This one will then be dragged onwards. So we gotta get all the way over. We're just gonna build this and then I will just see if it, if I like the design. And if I like it then I'll uh, I'll replicate it all over the place. Certainly coming some critical photons out here. And for before anyone says no, it's not possible to daisy chain them and uh, just go from one to the other because it has a distinct input, the lens, and a distinct output, the critical photon. And so if you start doing weird stuff like that or try to do it, you are going to end up having things mixed up. Right. That's just not it. Now I'm, I want to make this whole thing for us together. Weird going backwards like that. Still should work. Oops, wrong. Place it correctly. I'm sure there are some errors here. And I'm sure you'll point them out in the comment section. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm not finding them, otherwise I'll find them much, much later. And that kind of sucks. So, there. With this one built, we should now have all of these boosting. Boom, double, double the power. We should also see that this one is spiking up. I mean, it's not like in the crazy amount, but it's definitely something. And we have the critical photons out. See, I like this. It's gonna ring all around the world here, or all around the pole. Let me build that, and then when we come back, we can uh, we can start seeing what we get out of this. And that is the last of them. Let us see. Yep, we have uh, now this whole thing is running and out here with this, this is the one I hooked up first, you can see that it is not using a full belt or it's not producing a full belt, which is kind of good. But we're also just producing an absolute ton of these and we have no idea what to do with them. But this is the, the main part. Okay, so this was now, now also emptying. How much we got? We got 2,500. That's something we're going to do for the next episode, for sure, figure out what to do. And let's have a look at how much power we're actually drawing. <laughs> we are we are oversaturating the Dyson Sphere. We are not even... The Dyson Sphere is used up. There's not enough. 
Okay, I did not expect that. This is super greedy when it comes to power, but that's also what people have been saying. So yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be pretty nice. Uh, we're gonna end it right here. That's what a way to end, right? Uh, we've used all the power of the Dyson Sphere just to make critical photons, and it's not even a big part. I was like thinking, maybe I'll just put the whole northern side of the planet. But I don't know how much this is producing, and uh, what I do expect is that, yep, they are going to be continuously receiving. You can see they're eating up 154, well, they're trying, but they can only get 148 from the Dyson Sphere. And we're producing, I think this one's going to peak out at uh, 10 per second, that makes sense. So if I have 10 and 20, uh, 40 in a circle, so that's 80 in a circle times 10 per, sec per minute, that's 800 per minute, that's who knows what that is per second. Who knows? I'm just desperately clamoring for a calculator so I can pretend that I know. Oh, that is, of course, 13 per second. All right, so we have 13 critical photons per second coming in at this point, and we have uh, now found a way to use the entire Dyson Sphere. Oh dear, oh dear, this, this is super fun. I wonder if they shut off and stop consuming these when when this one fills up, nope, when that one fills up, doesn't matter, we just need to build a bigger Dyson Sphere, and the way we're going to do that is uh, maybe next episode, well, next episode, I guarantee you, we're going to figure out what the hell we're going to do with these critical photons, well, I know what we're going to do, we're going to split them and make antimatter, but that's a big project, so let's, uh, let's start that undertaking for next time. We're also probably going to start firing from the entire southern hemisphere of this planet on the Dyson Sphere since it's so close and now we've established a base here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, episode. I deliberately did a bit of, of sort of scaling up so you also get the sort of the behind the scenes of, of how big we actually scale the factory as well as unlocking some new tech and new planets. That's actually two new planets we've tapped today. So thank you very much for watching. If you like it, hit the like button. If you found some interesting observations or comments, then hit the comment section. You don't need to make comments for the sake of algorithm. That's kind of uh, a moot point because it takes more time for me to read them and process them and figure out that it's just an algorithmic comment. But I really like the actual genuine comments that uh, add something or point out something or just a compliment is also nice. So thank you very much. And thank you for subscribing to all of you who've done it and for the people who are considering, well, consider it again. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay effective.